But however, if you have your Bibles, we want to draw our attention this morning to the book of Titus. We're walking through the book of Titus, um, verse by verse, line by line, precept upon precept. It started in chapter 1, verse 1, months ago, and we find ourselves in chapter 2. I am so excited to be in the Word this morning. I wish some of you men would have showed up last week. Um, very disappointed in some of the guys that didn't show up in light of the title of the message, um, a word to the men. Um, but you know what? It's great that we have um, social media and technology, you know, so if you guys are here and you're here with your spouse, today the word is a word to the women. That means that, you know what, if you're going to nudge her in any way to say, hey, you hear that? I'm going to encourage you to go online to our YouTube channel and watch the message or go on to our website and listen to the message um, because it's not just these things are applicable to the wife or the women, but it's also applicable to the men as we are in our series, Remember Behavior in the Church. That's what chapter 2 is all about. And we said that as we walk through the book of Titus, the theme is setting in order the things that are lacking. And there are a lot of things that are lacking in each one of our lives as we've been discovering each week as we've been coming before the word. And then we have two more weeks in chapter two with the titles of the messages, a word to the servant or employee, and then a word to the church as we um, close out chapter two. But last week, again, we talked about the men and we looked at three points, but um, in verses two and then in we covered verse 1 and 2, and then we skipped down to verses 6 through 8. And we looked at something very important in verse 1, because if you've with, been with us or have not, chapter 1 is about, you know, Paul addressing the issue of um, sound doctrine, the lack of sound doctrine. Do me a favor, please, Taylor, turn these mics off, because I'm getting some feedback. Thank you. Um, it's about, you know, these, these false teachers, and Paul is addressing the issue of false teachers, but he's writing this letter to Titus, and he's saying, look here in verse 1 of chapter 2, but as for you, Titus, all these things are going on that are wrong within the church, but as for you, Titus, speak the things that pertain to sound doctrine healthy teaching you know those of you who have been with us we understand that that word sound means you know it comes from where we get our English word hygienical clean the way you take a shower the way you maintain even your physical form in your physical body is the same way that you should maintain your spiritual walk with God and so here he's saying hey not only is this beneficial to just men as in male figures but in verse 1 we see there that it is mankind that we should be speaking the things that pertain to sound doctrine and so here is the the encouragement that Titus is to have in light of all the messes around it, whether inside his church or or any other churches he is to speak the things that pertain to healthy teaching and that's what we desire to do here and so here, look, understand, as you look at the, the middle section, though, verses 5, I mean, I'm sorry, 3 through 5, what you find is there is an address to the older women and the younger women. That's what you see there. As I was looking at this, it seems like it was the outer layers for the men, and then the inner layer was for the women. You see, because we could have broke out the, the message to be to the older men and then to the older women and then to the younger men and the uh, younger women or the younger women and the younger men. However, you, you see this outlayer of the men, and I, I kind of thought of it kind of like a burger. What's a burger without the bun? It's just a piece of meat, right? You, you think about, you know, what's a P&J, a PB&J sandwich without the bread? I mean, you can take those elements, mix them up, and put them on a spoon, but when you put it on bread, mmm. What's a ham and cheese without, you know, the bread? It's not a real sandwich. You can roll it up and have finger food. But, but here, as you look at this here, it's the outer layer, but the, but the meat makes the sandwich. 
You see, they come together, and, and that's the beauty of this here. We're, we're not pointing out things in light of women and men to say men are superior to women and all of that stuff. What we're saying is we got roles, we got lanes, we, we have responsibility. And when we get in our lane, you know what? We thrive and we do well before God. And, and so here, when you see this here, I want to outline this in two simple points this morning, and we'll get out your way. Here, look, simply, in verse 3 is the older women. In verse 3, you got one verse, the older women. Now, the issue is discovering whether you're old or young. That's really the, the, the and I'm not going to touch that. Like, you know, whatever way you feel, like, hey, the, the, the thing is, you're going to be older in some circles, you're going to be younger in some other circles. We all got that space, you know. But here, look, in verses 4 through 5, we see the address to the younger women. And so we pick up in verse 3, it says, The older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husband. I did not write this. This is God's living word. That the word of God may not be blasphemed. See this here, because we said the first point is to the older women. And we see here, in light of what it says there is the older, it could be meaning the older in age in that respect, but it's the mature as well, the, 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 the more um, spiritual, if you make women in the church body. You see here, watch this here, but it's also saying these older in age, but it's saying likewise. Now what does that mean, likewise? Here, remember the context is talking about in verse 2, hey, to the men. And it's saying here, the same way the men are called into this place of reverence is the same way, likewise, in a similar exact way, it's calling you also to be what? It says there that they be reverent in behavior. We mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. Again, behavior matters. Behavior matters. You know, sometimes we talk about, hey, I'm a Christian and never worry or concerned about character and behavior. Look here, the Bible teaches that behavior matters. And, and we must understand this here because he is talking about here, literally is saying that they be reverent in behavior. That word can literally be translated priest-like. That these ladies, these women, these older women would be priest-like. Now, when you look at a priest, what do you think? Oh, don't, don't, don't have certain conversations around them. Be careful, you know. All kinds of things you, that comes through your mind when you think of, of priests. It, it's, it, there is a reverence about them that you have or may have lost. But nonetheless, here it's talking about the way that we behave, the way that we conduct ourselves. And he's saying here, older women, we're to conduct ourselves with this reverence. We're to be priest-like. You're to be priest-like in your behavior. But not only that, older women, not slanderers. And that's what he's saying here. Look, hey, in this word, as we get the Greek word, is, is, is very similar to the Spanish word, diablos. You know what that means? Devil. That is exactly what it means. And in 34 times in the scriptures, the, the enemy, Satan, is addressed as a slanderer. But when we look at this here, look, don't miss this, because what it's saying is this devil is what? Hey, it, it, it is word, the word is presented as a whisperer or a gossiper. And he's saying, hey, you older ladies, you're to stay away from being gossips. Watch this here. We're going somewhere because this is very important as we think about and remember, even as I exhorted the men last week, the older men need to set the example for the younger men. And this is the same call that we're going to find is that the older women need to set the example for the younger ladies. 
And so as you think about this here, he's saying, hey, don't be a gossip. Don't be a whisperer. Don't be a talebearer. And he's saying, not given to much wine. In other words, as you think about this word given, it's saying that, they, that it gains control over you. And whether you want to argue much, you know, it, it, the bottom line is extensive in your drinking. When you lose control, you know, it, or you're caused to be a slave to alcohol. And we don't even have to argue about this, but the reality is that this, alcohol then often was used, the people abused it, but, but it was also used as medicine. And what he's saying here is, hey, don't be a slave to drink. And you know the reality is this, is that, hey, no matter what and no matter what position you take on drinking, the bottom line is God never wants you to lose your control. And we mentioned in times past as we've been walking through this book, hey, when we indulge in drinking and you lose control, you don't see beneficial matters coming from that. You see teen pregnancies from drinking. You see STDs. You see car wrecks. That's what you see. You, don't see, you, you see suppression uh, of depression, you know, but you wake up and you got the same issues all over again. That's what you see from drinking. That's the truth. I know you see the commercials and, and they show a nice lady buy a car, you know, the, the drink all dripping and you look at you say, man, I need that. That's not what happened at the end of the night. You jacked up. And anyone that's indulged in alcohol, you know what I'm speaking is very true. And, and so here he's saying, hey, don't be given to this place of constantly sitting over the wine and having a drinking habit. Here, understand, he says, hey, you are to be a teacher of good things. In other words, you're to have right behavior. When you conduct, when your conduct is not godly, understand this, using your mouths in gossip and whispering, you know, being a drunk will never promote the proper behavior. It will never encourage the right behavior. And what we see here is older women, the Bible are, is calling to correct those who walk in an ungodly manner. You see, the Bible calls you and I to be able to even address older women. Now, how we do that, we need to do it respectfully because they are older. But they need to be addressed in light of so. And if you don't believe me, all you got to do is take your Bible and go to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and you'll see it there. That we're to address older women, whether we're young or old. You think, who you think you're talking to, little boy or, or little young lady? Hey, you're to address it from the scriptures when they are not being that example. But how we do it is very important. And understanding that. What we see here, understand, Matthew Henry said this. He said, the older women are to keep a holy decency and decorum in their clothing, in their gestures, and in their looks, and in their speech, and in all of their behaviors. Now, hey, hey, ladies, we need to discover this. We need to see this. We need to understand this. This is not a dated teaching the Bible is expressing. It is expressing God's heart and how he transcends generations. He transcends cultures. And so this is not dated. This is not age. This is reality. And so we must understand this here as you think about these things that we are learning. Number one, how is your conduct? Older ladies in the room, what does your behavior look like in and outside of the church? You need to examine that. You need to come to the truth of that. It is it truly devoted to God? Is your life truly devoted to God in your conduct? I know what we can talk. I'm talking about how we live. And ladies, older women in the room, we need to figure that out. We need to go before God and look to, you know, hey, let him examine us through the word. Be acquainted with the word so that you know what God expects of you. And it's not just how you feel that you're motivating how you live your day-to-day -day life. 
And so when you think about this, really, are you a slanderer? The Bible calls, again, this word a devil's mouth. That's what it is. And I know men are different, but women can cut with words. They can divide, they can sow discord. You read it, Philippians chapter 4, there was an issue in the church. Hey, Paul was calling them to address that issue. And here, as you look at this, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 23 says, A perverse mouth, um, perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. Isn't that interesting that somebody can sow discord and separate the best of friends? You know, if you look at Proverbs chapter 26, verse 22, it says the words of a talebearer is like tasty trifles and they go down into the innermost part of your body. Consider that. As you think about these here, he says they are not to be given to wine. And I wonder today, are you controlled by alcohol? Oh, I'm a social drinker. Well, how do you define social drinkers? Because I've met people that say they're a social drinker, but they drink every day of the week. How social are you? <laughs> like, you, you really have to consider that. Here, look, hey, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not the Holy Spirit. But you know when you're drinking too much. You know when you move from social drinking to lush. That's just the reality. And here he's calling women, hey, specifically, men, y'all had y'all day, go back again and check it out. But here, understand, women are not to be controlled by alcohol. Look here. It says, teachers of good things. Again, ladies that desire to teach. Here's something that, this is the lane. This is where God's called you to teach. Hey, teach this thing of good behavior, of good conduct. Hey, follow this here. As you teach younger women how they're to carry themselves, as you look at this here, don't miss this, ladies. We will only be able to teach good things, or you will. I'm not a lady, so I, when I use we today, it, it, it don't refer to me in this respect of the context, okay? Just in case I make a mistake in light of we okay <laughs> but ladies look understand this you will only be able to teach good things if you yourselves are right before God in light of these things how are you going to tell other kids or young people young women how to carry themselves and you're not the example here, look, follow this. The church, I believe, is suffering from older godly women. You see, I can look back. I didn't grow up in the church, but there was times I had these church encounters, and there were some godly women, you know, at least I thought so. They were called the mothers of the church. Some of y'all know about the mothers of the church. And you see, when, when the mothers of the church was there, hey, you wasn't fooling around. They call you out. They, they pull you to the, they, they might just, oh, I ain't for the fan of, of calling you out before they discuss with the matter with you one-on-one. -on -one. But they'll call you out because they wasn't playing around. They were godly women. These were the women that were on their faces before God. These were the women that were modest in their ways that they carried themselves. Oh, you say that's old. No, it's not. It's godly. And here, as you look at this and you think about this, consider for yourself, hey, what manner? These ladies are necessary for today's young women to have an example to follow. I'll tell you, when you look at this here, older women, are you here, hey, trying to be a model, walking through the church, you know, as a model? Hey, the best thing is to not be trying to be a model, but a model for younger ladies. We have to consider this here in light of, hey, are you concerned more in what you look like on the exterior than what comes from the depths of your heart? As younger women look at examples, they're looking for examples. They're looking for people to model. And the sad reality is that they're modeling a lot of the world. That's the influence. 
That's the hot topic there as you think about this here. But look here, your identity, ladies of God, I'm speaking of women of God, your identity is found in Christ Jesus. That's where your identity is at. You don't need a, 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 a guy to give you identity. You don't need, you know, Cardi B to give you identity. You know, it's very sad even in addressing older women. It's very sad when you, got, when you have... 50-year-olds going and getting belly piercings with their young daughters. You know, eat, you know, tongue rings. You, you old already. That's done. Let it go. And the reality is it's very sad because that is very popular in today's culture. You and your daughter going to the club. What is that? And so really consider this. When, when you look at yourself and understand what the world does, hey, I don't frown upon. Because the world is going to do what they do. But I'm saying for Christian women, professing to be godly women, Christ-like, these things shouldn't be named among us. And so here, as you think about this here, identify your identity in Christ Jesus, and it'll take care of a lot of issues. And so when you think about this in light of younger women versus four and five, and everybody wants to be young, so pay attention. It says that they admonish the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, and homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. And so when we look at this here, the first thing it says that you're to, the older women is to admonish. In other words, to encourage or even advise, warn them, to teach them, train them up, explain to the younger women what their way of living should look like according to the word of God. Not how you feel, not by your traditions, but what God is, has taught you, how you have lived it out, how you have been the example. Even if you came into the thing late, hey, what God's been teaching you and you're saying hey I learned this out in the world and this is not correct but this is the way I'm supposed to live and this is beneficial to you too and so here as you consider this younger women need to get this now before it's too late if you're younger today you need to get your heart wrapped around these things now, I had the opportunity this past week to share at the Bible College, and one of the beautiful things that, it was just a, like a revelation to me, was this. Standing in a room with a bunch of 20-year-olds, 18-year-olds, and the subject matter that I was sharing on was beware how you do your charitable deeds. And it was interesting because having lived a little longer than them I could encourage them they were motivated to you know they're desiring to be used of God and so forth like that and so I can encourage them hey having looked back where to be careful at how to guard your heart from certain things things that have happened along my journey in my walk with the Lord and so here in this same way we are to teach we're to warn you're to warn older ladies, more spiritual women in the room. You're to warn the younger ones. And I encourage you, don't run from this because there are seven things older women are to encourage women in. And that's what we're going to discover as we continue to walk through this part. And younger women, that what younger women are to do and to be. You're to live these things out. And the first issue is concerning marital issues and it says there that they're to love their husbands now I want to let you into something here this is not the word agape you see when you when you address a matter on the terms of agape you could kind of remove yourself from the situation you kind of say well God God hasn't given me that love for my husband but you can't do that with this word this word is speaking of phileo in the respect of brotherly love. And so when you consider that in light of, hey, where is your brotherly love? Where do you have that affection for your husband? All the women can learn this too. In light of this, but you should have already learned it. 
That's all this is saying here. You, you should have learned this, but you can learn it today. If you're struggling with your love for your husband, today you can learn to love your husband in a brotherly way. God's not, I, you know, I just wasted time with you. You're done. You're never going to love him. No, that's not the way. And so here, look, follow this. He's saying here, look, the command is that younger ladies are to love their husband. I ask some younger women right now a question. What kind of marriage do you desire? Do you desire a marriage that is intimately, you know, more than intimacy? Do you desire a marriage that is more like a brotherly bond instead of just roommates? Do you have desire to be in, your, in love with your husband when you get older? Look here, this is the question that we must answer for ourselves in light of ladies loving their own husband because here, look, hey, you should have this drive or this heart to have affection for them. You should care for them. Your heart should be tender towards them. This word is really bringing out the idea of having a warm feeling towards them. And I know husbands can drive you crazy. I get it. I'm one. My wife better not say amen. She listened. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> and so, you win. <laughs> For now. But here, look, understand, younger or older would have care for our husbands you're to have a care for your husband you'd have a tender heart for your husband this is not predicated on how he acts towards you this is all predicated on being obedient to God that's the difference and I don't care if you pray five hours a day I don't care if you read your Bible 12 of the rest of the hours of the day if we're not applying these practical things you're not going to win your husband over by your conduct here look understand this here this is simply saying that you are to love your husband but you are also to love your children and women older women are to teach the younger how to love your children how to love them, and that is a very similar word in light of phileo. That's where it's birthed from. And so you are to have that tenderness, that care, and feeling for your, hu your ch husband as well as your children's. And ladies, it is a true blessing, if you didn't remember, to be blessed, to be able to bear a child, to be able to be considered someone's mother. That is a privilege. That is a blessing. And we're to value and cherish. You're to value and cherish that child that God has entrusted you with. In fact, even Paul would say in 2 Timothy chapter, I mean 1 Timothy chapter 2, hey, that you would be blessed in childbearing. Bringing forth children. And here, as you see, the first question I guess you would ask yourself is, do you love your husband unselfishly today? If you're married today, do you love your husband unselfishly? Do you deny yourself to be a blessing to him? Here, you have to consider that. Oh, no, well, he, when, he, when he start cleaning up or, or when he start, you know, paying some more bills around here, you know, you take all those attitudes instead of just loving them unselfishly because God's called you to. Here, look, watch this here. He says, do not give, I mean, do you give him sacrificial love? Is your heart one of those things where you're like, I ain't doing this and I ain't doing that? Some of y'all know that language. You're always talking about what you ain't going to do. While he sits there waiting on figuring out, well, what are you going to do? What are you willing to do? Here, look, follow this. Do you have a quiet and a peaceable love towards him? What, what kind of heart do you have? Are you always argumentative, yelling, and disrespectful? You know, when, when a man don't feel respected, he got, he got a heart problem. 
It's something wrong. There's a wedge in the relationship. A man needs to feel respected, and he needs to be respected by his wife. Again, not because he said so, but God has called you to respect and love and value your husband. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to argue and fuss and fight and, and be yelling at him to get your point across, embarrassing him in the public, all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, look, hey, these things are real issues today just as much as they were at any other point in time. This love spoken of is here is different than just the will of the heart. This, this, the difference is, you know, you, you can know something, but this is, this has to be birthed from within. This is not just God, you know, saying, well, I'm just going to do this, you know, because God said so. This is a heart that is saying, look, hey, I'm willing to do this because God has birthed this in me and I'm going to carry it forth. You see this here? Understand, a man needs to know you are not only committed to the marriage, but he desires your affection as well. As a young wife, do you have affection for your husband? Hey, that's something to examine. As a young married lady, you should love, you should be loving to learn how to love your husband. You should love to want to know how to do that. That should be your desire. If you're single today, as a lady, as a young lady, I have one thing to say to you. Are you desiring marriage? I hope you've taken note because this is, this is, because this is loving your husband God's way. Don't marry someone you're not remotely willing to apply these principles to. You'll end up in a messy situation. That's the truth. Here, look, understand this. Mothering your children. Child neglect is child abuse. And there are many people giving game systems to their kids or, a, you know, some kind of thing to send them off. Look here, child neglect is child abuse. Older godly women must teach the younger ladies, contrary to what the world teaches, God calls you to put your children before your career, your job. Look, career before children is what the world teaches. God says children before career. Don't miss that. We must give child care to our children opposed to putting them in child care. See this. That should be the first option. Here, look, as you look at this, moms who stay at home with little ones, understand this, that is a full-time job for you. <laughs> Some mother said, yes, that is, that's right. <laughs> that's 24-7, guys. You know, when my kids were little, I remember, you know, I, I wasn't responsible for changing a diaper in the middle of the night, but I was responsible for making them bottles. Or going up and getting that and warming it up or whatever I needed to do. That was my part. But here, that was a 24 hour. If I said, man, I need to sleep, I gotta get up in the morning. You know who's going up with that baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that stuff going on. That mom. Mom is getting up. When the baby's sick, mom is on it. I'm talking about a loving, caring mom. You say, who gets a chill, chill of tissue and, and just go outside. Now, I'm not talking about that mom. I'm talking about a real mom. Care, tender. You know, that's a dad. Boy, go outside. You, you all right. That's the difference. And the kid needs both of those elements. Amen. You don't need two moms in the house. You understand that. You need two dads in the house. You understand that too. They need a mother and a father. That's the way God designed it. That's the way it was, that's the way it is, and that's the way it always shall be. 
We can't let the culture redefine that. Well, you know, they, 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 they said marriage is, is between this one and that one. That ain't what God said. Oh, well, that's hate. No, it's Bible. And you can love them and you can point them because I believe many of them are not content in that relationship. You see, the problem, though, I will say is this. Many of heterosexual marriages are not content in their relationships. Now, having said that, Christians, we need to learn how to dwell with one another with true godly love so that we can be an example to the world outside who is just doing things, trying to find some kind of pleasure. Our Christian wish, witness should be like, wow, man, I want that. I need that. Here, look, understand this. As a mom, again, children before career. There are many people in credit card debt, house loans, trying to keep up with the Joneses and sacrificing our children at the cost of it. Here, look, follow this. Who's going to train your child like you? Who's going to train them up? Who's going to raise them up like you're going to do it? Moms. I can't tell you what. Nobody. Who, look here. Who's going to love them like you will do it? No one. Who's going to apply the rod of correction in a proper manner between um, better than a loving mother? Who's going to really do that better than you? No one. And here, don't miss this. Moms, are your children your first priority following your husband? Following after your husband. Are your children your first priority? You are willing, are you willing to forfeit the American dream for the sake of your children? Look here, understand this. I can tell you what, early on in our marriage, we worked two jobs, Ruthie and I work two jobs. What we discovered was what Ruthie was making was paying for her commute, her lunch, and childcare with a couple of pennies at the end. The stress was so high. And what we decided to do from there is to one, honor God with our resources, two, to live on one salary. And in so doing, it allowed her to be home with all four of our children. Well, as we added, we didn't all have four at one time. <laughs> but throughout the years, she's been home. And she's been modeling this example of being a homemaker in this generation. She does it well, not only for her own four, but even now with the community children. Feeding, clothing, hey, you know what? Nurturing spiritually just as much as physically. When you consider even her example in the respect, and she won't walk around telling you this, but I'm telling you today, so she might lose a couple of gems. But as an example, in the home, look, hey, there hasn't been many a days I can think of that I've come home and couldn't bring a friend in behind me because the house is in the disarray. She's kept the home. And here, as you think about this here, look, we need to consider, hey, our children need your love, your time, your attention, and are you willing to make this kind of investment to your family's legacy? That's really where it lies at. It's not just for today. It's a legacy that you're leaving behind. And what kind of legacy are you leaving behind? Because you see, the parents that send their kids to church, but they don't go themselves, you know what kind of legacy they're leaving? Kids are going to do the same thing when they get older. They'll be sending their kids to church. The parents that say sports before, Gathering with the saints on Sunday? 
Your kids will do the same thing. Hey, they go by what you do, not what you say. It's the model that we live. Hey, follow this. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way it should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Understand this word training means make narrow. And as you look at it here, understand this. is The kid's going all over the place, but it's for you to see his gift his, and, and just to shift him and point them in the right direction to help them steer in the right lane. So that they have some direction in life. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 15 says, Foolishness is bound up in, a, in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Parents that don't spank your kids in the proper manner, not abuse, are doing a disservice to your children. Well, well that, that's your opinion. That's your house. Look, foolishness is in your kid's heart. Just because you raise them in a Christian home, don't think that they, they are all Christian saints. You better tell them how, how sinful they are. You better point it out and help them recognize it. If not, they'll just become real good at covering it up. You need to help them to see in light of their need for God just as much as you and I need them. Here, look, don't miss this as you think about it. Hey, in verse 5, we see the third point, and it's in being discreet. And so it's being thoughtful, sensible, moderate in your ways. And look here, women inside or outside the home are called to not to indulge in loose, free drinking, partying, or even when it even concerns food for that matter. See, she is called to exercise self-control over her craves and her emotions. I want to point out two researchers I got a full education on last night. The first lady's name is Amber Rose. You may know her. And these two educations I received right on Instagram grieved in my heart as I went on their page. To be honest with you, I believe yesterday I was exposed to pornography. In the way that these two ladies are mentioned, look here, Amber Rose has an annual walk called the Slut Walk, where women can walk as free or naked as they desire. And in this, she says, and I quote, that this is not, and you know, I, women should be free enough to walk around and express themselves in a way that this is not an invitation to give to men to touch them, but they can live the way they wish. That's what our young girls are learning. Here, if that's not enough, I went on Cardi B's page. Very popular woman, matter of fact, having 48.8 thousand followers right now on Instagram and I tell you what this is adult education in here and I'll be quite honest with you something drove me to tears last night as I saw this woman's expression of how her husband lays out roses on the ground and what her words is and I quote with no shame to what I'm about to tell you but so that you could be aware hey if older women are not an example to these younger women they will find their identity in these kind of women but what she said was I guess he wants me to and I paraphrase give him oral sex for many hours so I better go get drunk In a one-minute clip, that's what our daughters are hearing today. Many twerks and all kinds of stuff on that woman's page. And that's what our girls are exposed to as what women are today. That's the model. That's the example that our daughters are supposed to be involved with. Why? Because the church suffers from godly women. It should never be. It should never be. 
It's heartbreaking. I don't fault her. She doesn't know the Lord. What is it that our young women aren't appealed to, don't appeal to godly character? Why is it that that is the influence in our generation? That's only two, ladies. That's only two. And it's very heartbreaking to see and to discover these things. But my heart breaks for the church if we don't get this. If we don't get this, to set in order the things that are lacking. Men, go hear it. Women, you're hearing it. The Holy Spirit is speaking. What are we modeling before our next generation, before this generation? They're going to be the church. We're not going to be here forever. They're going to be the example. And this influence has infiltrated the church. That's the reality. And when we consider these things as we wrap it up, here, look, are you thoughtful in your dress in the way you go about your life, hey, carrying yourself in these ways that younger women and men respect you. And so consider this. Is your desire to be like who you see on social media? That'll only bring you depression. These people are all just made up with filters and all of that. That's not who they look at until they spend all that money. And I mean, you look at Nicki Minaj before and you look at her now, that is not the same girl from when she was broke. Money can change a thing and you depressed because you don't have no money to look like her. Remember, your identity is in Christ Jesus. Here, look, follow this as we close out. It says chase, in other words, without defect. You're called to purity morally as well as sexually. Here, understand, it's supposed to be pure in thought and in action. And the question would simply be, are you infected by the world? Are you using your life in sexual immorality when God's called you to be pure? How are your thoughts in light of being pure in thought because the thought is only what happens on in the future as an action that's the only reality and so when you have that thought look here when I was coming up you know girls that were fast that, that was embarrassing they wasn't fast nonetheless but that was embarrassing today is popular it's like you get more followers it's, it's the trendy thing and so we must help the culture to redirect itself at least for our godly girls and here as you see this don't miss this very two important verses I want to point out Ephesians chapter 5 verse 7 and 17 it says do not be unwise but understand what the will of God is or what the will of the Lord is we must be women who, you must be women who, um, you know, are transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the word of God, not what culture says about you. And so we must understand that. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, it says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. You know, the reality is this. When you sleep with one, you sleep with everyone that they slept with. And then on and on and on and on it goes. You get a piece of them for the rest of your life. Here, look, understand this. It's saying here that you're to be a homemaker. Not, you're supposed to be busy at home, carrying out. Or you say, well, that, you know, I, I, I ain't no homemaker. I'm a worker. But that's okay, ladies. If your husband's working and you're working and you need that resource, but it still doesn't neglect your responsibility. And that's the thing. Look, hey, women are, it's not saying women are only supposed to be home and, and, and just waiting for their husbands with twiddling fingers. That's not what's being expressed here. What's being expressed here is this. If you're needing to work outside of the home, it should never suffer the responsibilities in the home. That's the important part. 
And so when you consider this, understand, I know the culture tells us something different, but here it's telling you to, to be good. In other words, useful, beneficial, po uh, positive. In other words, you have high character. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says, Do not be deceived. E evil company corrupts good habits. And the question would be, are you walking with ungodly women? Are you around that bad company? You hang around gossips, you hang around, you know, whisperers. Hey, redirect your character, redirect your company so that you can be around people who are going to lift you up because God's calling you to a higher place. He's calling you to a deeper place. And so why do you want to waste your time with people that's just trying to pull you down? Here, look, follow this. The, follow, the final thing is obedient to their own husbands. In other words, be subject. Your own. That own means he's yours. That's your man. Right? You were that's my man. Well, this is saying here, be subjected to him. It's not, you know, submit or get hit. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> that, that's not it. But you see, we can pervert the word. And we can start, I ain't submitting that angel. And we can get all carnal and, and caught up in the flesh. And I ain't submitting. But I want to ask you a question. Even in light of the word of God, there is leadership. And in that leadership, there's not two heads that God has appointed to the home. Women, you need to let your husband lead. Well, you say, he ain't as smart as me. He ain't working hard as I do. It doesn't say none of this in here. So those are your own excuses on why you won't let him lead. He is to lead. And husbands, you are to be the example. If you don't know God, you don't know his voice, you need to learn it because you're supposed to lead under God's headship. And so here, look, hey, wives, you need to let your husbands make the mistakes. And you need to trust God because you're being obedient to the word of God and therefore God's going to take care of you. Your faith big now? Woo, right? Oh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> look, in closing, I know you got women's lib and feminist groups and all of that, and we don't have time to quote the people that I wanted to quote, but I want to let you know this. It's more than what meets the eye. It's more than what meets the eye when it comes to those things. It's not just, you know, oh, you know, we're trying to suppress women's freedom. Women are free. Jesus made them free. Really want to get technical. But there are roles, and just as we opened up when we talked about the hamburger or whatever it is, hey, the, the two coming together makes it beautiful. Ladies, when you are in your lane, men, when, you are in your, when we are in ours, it makes for a better chemistry. So I want to encourage us as we close out. It's saying here, the reality is this. All of these things, lady, the benefit is that the word of God is not blasphemed. You see, when you don't obey God's word and what his call is, this is the problem. People who see you, they say, man, no, nah, that's, that's, that's blasphemy. That, that's hypocrisy. They, I see them over there. They pray, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, caught the spirit, all that stuff, right? And curse your husband out. You're like, nah, that, that ain't the word. And so when you carry yourself like that, the word of God is blasphemy. But when, you're, when, you, when you yield to this, Oh, God gets the shine. He gets the glory. And so I want to pray together as we consider this. Hey, ladies, if you profess to know him, don't be like chapter 1, verse 16. They profess to know God, but in works, they're abominable, disobedient, disqualified from every good work. Because that is the work. That's the responsibility. So may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may he shine his face upon you, may he give you peace to just yield to God's will for your lane. And ladies, again, who are single in the room, don't marry no guy that you're not willing to apply these principles to. Men, don't marry 
no woman that you're not willing to apply these principles to. It has to be walked out in the ways of God because when that friction comes, you're going to want to know that, man, we got a reference place that we're going to yield to. And so, Father, I thank you for your living word. I thank you for this time together. I thank you for the privilege it is to represent your voice. And I pray, God, it was your voice and your voice only. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just saturate the hearts of your people, men and women. I pray, God, even as you call us to this way of life, I pray for anyone here that has yet come to know you. These things are merely impossible without you but I thank you Lord you not only hung on the cross but you rose again from the grave conquering sin and death and today if we yield our lives to you you will impart us with the Holy Spirit and empower us to live these things forth and so I pray for anyone here right now who is yet to enter into a relationship with Jesus as the prayer team comes forward I want to encourage you I want to encourage you in two ways I want to encourage you to consider where you're at with Jesus today if you have yet come to know him if you're not in a relationship with him if you were to die today and you know that you would be separated from him I want you to come and receive prayer say hey I need Christ in my life today I want to have my life centered on Christ Jesus I want my life my home to be the foundation of God's will for my family if that's your will hey but before that hey God wants to deal with you personally he wants to deal with you one-on-one -on -one. he wants to impart his spirit into your life so that you can walk in victory and that you could have these things that we talked about today if that's your desire the prayer team is available but also if you are in a living relationship with Christ today I want to encourage you today hey God wants to pour out his spirit on your life he wants to use you he wants to use you in your home that that home would flow out hey a healthy home brings about a healthy church a healthy church brings about a healthy community and these things that Paul is imparting to Titus is for the benefit of the church and I believe they're for the benefit of our church today and so if that's your desire hey don't wait for your husband you do what God says be obedient to God in your lane and watch God bless you watch God honor his word before you hey if you desire to honor God hey watch him do a mighty work in your life singles Wherever you're at, wherever that is, whether you desire to be married, whatever, you know, if God's called you to singleness, hey, be married to him. Be committed to him. And let him work. But you can come and pray. God give you the godly man that you are willing to yield and subject yourself to under God's leadership. And so the prayer team is available for that let's stand together in a closing song of worship and may the Lord bless you keep you and shine his face upon you as he walks or as you walk with him this week God bless you guys